Now I'm going to teach you how basic cooling systems work in a refrigerator. They all work basically the same way, just there's about three different designs and how they work. This fridge has the simplest design. Just one cooling coil in the back. It's just a complete continuous loop. So on this picture, the high pressure Freon is pumped out of the compressor, the high side line it goes to the top of that cooling coil or condensing coil. It cools itself off by room temperature, percolates its way down, it comes out at the bottom and it goes to the filter dryer. And then off the filter dryer is a very tiny tube called a capillary tube that restricts the flow of Freon and causes it to stay in a liquid form. The liquid form then flows up that tiny capillary tube all the way up the top into the evaporator. That's the cooling coil in the freezer. It has less coils than on the back. It percolates its way down goes and it comes all the way back down again to get recirculated into the input of the compressor or the suction side. There's always a dead end tube on the compressor like this one and that's where they filled it in the factory, pinched it off and welded it. So this is the suction tube coming, bringing gas back in. And this is a high pressure tube pushing gas out to radiate its heat inside the room. Now some compressors have two extra tubes down low on them and they're fairly small ones and sometimes they're used and sometimes they're not used. Well they're not actually connected to anything inside the compressor. It's just a loop, like a hollow tube that goes underneath the oil level in there and the oil level is usually a couple inches deep and it's called an oil cooler tube. If the manufacturer chooses they can pump Freon through the condensing coil, cool it off, then the cooler gas is just pumped through the oil that cools the oil, then the gas is heated up again and it goes through another set of tubes in the condenser before it goes up to the evaporator in the freezer to do its cooling job. I'll explain. So I've drawn the compressor this time with just a loop inside that just goes in and out. On these type of fridges the condensing coil is actually two different sets of loops shown here. So the hot gas comes out of the compressor, goes through one set of cooling loops, comes down here, goes through the compressor to cool the oil, just comes back out again, then goes through the second set of radiant loops that cools off the condenser, then it comes out, goes through the filter dryer, goes up to the freezer like in the other drawing, and gets into the larger diameter tubes where the compressed gas has a chance to expand and go from liquid to gas, and that causes the cooling, then it comes back down goes into the larger tube, the input of the compressor, and which just floats all around inside the compressor and the little piston and suction machine in the middle and compressing device just sucks it from gaseousness from inside the compressor. It's not plumbed directly to the little compressor and then it gets compressed and pushed out that tube. Residential or home style fridges like this made before 1992 almost always have R12 gas in them which is no longer legal in North America unless you're from Mexico and that was an ozone depleting gas which means it damaged the ozone up there so we got more nasty rays and they've replaced it with R134 like labeled on that compressor after 92. If you're repairing your refrigerator you shouldn't mix the two kind of gases. An older compressor like that uses mineral oil to lubricate itself. It looks something just like hydraulic oil. And the newer compressors use usually alkabenzene oil. And that oil is, works better with R134A A because, R134, because R134A dissolves in it very well. And Freon R12 dissolves in mineral oil really well because while the fridge is running, there's a certain amount of oil that sort of percolates through the tubes also. If you break open a compressor quickly after it's had Freon in it, from a compressed system like this, and you stir up the oil and shake it, it all foams up like soda pop. Freon can dissolve in compressor oil. Now there's another common kind of cooling system on a fridge which even has another set of tubing, like this fridge has. So when the Freon comes out the bottom of the condensing coil, you just see it disappear inside the wall of the fridge. I'll show you where that goes. That tube I just pointed at would be right there on the other side of the fridge. 
So it just runs across the outside of the fridge and then it goes up close to the door frame all the way around the outside. Then it just runs along the wall and comes out over here and hooks to the filter dryer. You can see where it's coming out. Some fridges door frames get too cold and because of that they start to rust and of course they start to drip. So this is a way of not using any electricity and just using some weight heat from, waste heat from the compressor to warm up the door frame. The only disadvantage of this is very often air gets in the space here. You often have fiberglass insulation in the walls and so that gets the insulation moist after a while and the moist insulation rusts out this tube somewhere around the door frame very often and that's one of the most common places where fridges will leak free on and you won't be able to find your fridge leak or be able to repair it usually so you have to throw it away. The other most common places where fridges leak is the evaporator coil since it's just made out of thin aluminum and the thing it doesn't like the most that even eats copper is tomatoes so people that do a lot of tomato freezing or tomato processing or anything like that and use their freezer or their fridge to store tomato paste, tomato sauce or juice or whatever their fridges don't last as long as others because it creates an acid that eats through the coils. The least most common place a fridge leaks Freon is actually the condensing coil. If your fridge is leaking Freon somewhere around the back a common way to identify where it's leaking is it's often on a silver solder joint and you'll see a tiny bit of oil dampness since oil is moving around through the Freon at the same time, it often seeps out a tiny bit and it gives you a visual way to tell you where the leak is. So they can actually leak any place where, the, where there's a joint and sometimes they just leak because a tube is corroded, you know, like that one. All the leaks on the outside of the fridge and on the back are very easy to fix with a piece of Silfos or silver solder and paste. I like Silfos the best. This stick's worth about two bucks. It doesn't need any kind of paste or any preparation just so long as the tubes are fairly clean you can just weld it on but definitely need a high temperature torch a regular propane torch won't do this like I said in most circumstances is leaking around the door frame good luck trying to fix that and good luck trying to fix an aluminum evaporator there is types of solder and stuff to fix aluminum evaporators but it's, they're usually not easily accessible and it's very difficult to find the leak because it's inside all those little fins. It's very difficult to get access to it if you do find it. So if your fridge is fairly new it might be worthwhile buying a new one but if your fridge is more than 10 years old I would say throw it away if your evaporator is bad. There are things called Freon leak detectors and these things have a few thousand volts in the tip and it charges molecules and it measures the resistance in the air of when the charged molecules are in the air between the little pin prick in the middle and that outside edge. I'll show you. I've unscrewed the tip. Don't know if you can see it but inside there is, looks like the prick of a pin and there's high, a high voltage corona in there like if you look at that in the dark when this thing's turned on a few thousand volts is trying to make like a little spark that jumps but it can't jump but the distance is too great so when Freon gets in there the molecules become charged and the resistance changes in there and the machine measures the resistance and as you get more and more Freon in there more red lights turn on and it starts ticking faster like a Geiger counter there's another kind of leak detector that uses sound and it's just a very tiny microphone in something like that and it listens for the hissing sound which we wouldn't be able to hear with our ears and sends off a signal to tell you that could be a leak. And if your leak is kind of large and easy to find, even soapy water and soap bubbles can help find the leak. Most leaks are way too slow for soap bubbles to work. It just would take all day for it to fill one bubble and by then the bubble would be dried up. Silfos silver soldering sticks work great on copper even if it's a little bit tarnished but they don't work very well at attaching steel lines to steel lines or steel lines to copper lines. For that purpose I like to just use regular brass brazing rods.